In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a spare laptop as a second monitor for your main computer, whether your main computer is a laptop or a desktop. Hi, I'm Fred Kelly, your nerd sidekick. This may sound impossible, but with a little video voodoo, you can turn a spare laptop into a second monitor. And once you know how to do it, it only takes a few seconds to set up. Well, let's get to the details. This is specifically for Windows computers and you'll need to be running Windows 8 or above. I will be demonstrating this in Windows 10, so the Windows 8 interface may look different. I'd recommend upgrading to Windows 10 if you haven't already. As of April 2020, when I'm filming this, the upgrade is still free. Watch this video to get the upgrade to Windows 10. The conventional way to connect one or more monitors to a computer is obviously with a cable. Desktop computers have one or more video ports that let you, let you connect a standalone monitor like this one or monitors to that computer. In a previous video, I showed how to add a second monitor to your computer using cables. You can see that video by clicking the link up here. And most laptops have one or more video ports as well, allowing you to add a second monitor to a laptop. But if you tried to connect this computer to this laptop with a cable and use this laptop as a second monitor for this desktop computer, it just won't work. The reason is that standard video ports on a computer only send video out. Yes, there are some computers that have special hardware that allow video to come into a computer, but those are definitely not standard. And unless you are a video maker, you probably will not have that kind of hardware. So for example, you can't take this HDMI cable that's coming out of my desktop computer and plug it into this laptop and see output, output from this desktop on this laptop. The video ports just aren't designed to work that way. Again, the video ports only send video out, not in. So if this laptop only sends video out, how do you use it as a second monitor? The answer is that we don't use cables at all. Some hardware, typically older hardware, won't work when you try what I'm about to show you, but recent computers will allow you to do this. This process depends on both computers being connected to the same network and the target device, in this case my laptop, must be connected to the network via Wi-Fi. This won't work if the target device is connected with an Ethernet cable like this one, which is the type of cable that is used to normally connect a computer to a network. The first thing to check is that the target device, again that's my laptop, is logged in to the Wi-Fi. If you I'll put on my glasses. If you look down here on the taskbar, you will see an icon that looks like this if you are connected to Wi-Fi. And if you are connected with a network cable, it looks like this. Again, you must be connected via Wi-Fi on the target computer for this to work. The computer that is outputting the video, in my case, this desktop computer, can be connected with either Wi-Fi or an Ethernet cable. The process of getting connected via Wi-Fi is beyond the scope of this video, but there are tons of resources available online, so you should be able to get this done with a little digging or some help from a kid down the street. Once you have both computers connected to your network, it's time to add the laptop as a second monitor to this desktop computer. Built into Windows is the capability to connect a wireless display. A wireless display may be a standalone TV, as many newer TVs have this capability built in. But the great thing is that your laptop and most modern PCs, including desktops, can also function as a wireless display. To start this process, first go to the laptop you wish to use as a second monitor. We only have to do this process once, assuming you are satisfied with the settings. In the future, you will start this process from the other computer. You'll see that step in a couple of minutes. So on the laptop, hold down the window key. That's the one that looks like the Windows logo. Hold it down and simultaneously press the P key. Over here on the right, you'll see a gray area that pops out. Click the link that says connect to a wireless display. Near the bottom, it will say projecting to this PC. 
Click the link and you will see a page with settings you can adjust for how your laptop will behave when another computer connects to it as a wireless display. The first drop down lets you control whether or not this computer is available as a wireless display and when it is available. You probably want this set to available everywhere on secure networks, or you can also set it to be available everywhere, which would include when you're logged into a non-secure network. And finally, you can set it to always off if you don't want this device to be used as a wireless display. Next, you can specify what happens when a computer wants to connect to or project to this PC. If you set this to every time a connection is requested, you will have to approve the use of this PC as a wireless display each time you or someone requests it. If you set this to first time only, you only have to give permission to the other PC once and from then on the wireless connection will not require approval from this PC. If you're working in a private or safe location, you probably want to set this to first time only so the connection is automatic each time thereafter. And for added protection, you can require a pin for pairing either never, first time, or always. And finally, if you're concerned about battery life on your laptop, you can set this last setting so that your PC can only be discovered for projection when it's plugged into a power source. At the bottom, the name of your PC is displayed. Make a note of this name since you will be connecting to this specific PC in a few moments. If you happen to have more than one wireless display connected to your network, you want to make sure you connect to the right one. Now go to the main computer you actually intend to work from. In my case here, the desktop computer. Press and hold the window key while simultaneously pressing P, then release both keys. The gray bar pops out from the right of the screen and you can just click on connect to a wireless display. You'll see connect here at the top and the gray bar will be populated with any available wireless displays. It may take a few seconds for your wireless display to appear. If you don't see your display, you can click the search button here and type in the name of the PC that we looked at in the previous step. Click on the display you wish to connect to. At the top of the screen, you'll see a small bar that says connecting to your device. On the other computer, the one you are attempting to connect to, the laptop in my case, a small notification will pop up in the lower right of your screen. In the drop down here, you have several options for what you want to happen. Assuming you wish to allow the connection, click always allow, then click OK. If you do not wish to connect, just click dismiss. Once the wireless connection is made, your laptop will now be displaying video output from your other computer. Again, my desktop is now displaying on my laptop and this monitor. You can now use the laptop to duplicate the display or extend the display. I'll explain the difference. If you duplicate the display, what you see on the main computer's display and on the laptop will be the same. The more likely scenario is that you will want to extend your display. That will give you more room to view your programs in various windows because your workspace is now the size of two monitors, not one. To switch between duplicate or extend, press the window key and P to open the project settings. Notice that I'm saying project, not project, because we are projecting our computer to a wireless display. Yes, English can be confusing and difficult. Click on the setting you wish to use. For example, I will change mine from Extend to Duplicate. You can see that the exact same thing is displayed now on both displays. So if I bring up a web browser and move that around, you can see it is the exact same thing on both, both displays. I'll switch back to Extend so the two monitors display different things. If I open any program like this web browser, I can drag it from one window to another. I can open a second program like the calculator in this other display here and view different things on each display. You may need to fine tune the way the two displays are positioned in relation to one another. To make these changes, you'll need to go to your display settings. 
You can do that by right clicking on the desktop. So I'm right clicking and click display settings. Or down here in the search box, you can just start typing display. Once you type a few letters, you will see display settings here and just click on that. You'll be taken to the display settings page and at the top you will see an area that says rearrange your displays. Inside the gray area you will see two or more rectangles that represent the monitors connected to the main computer. Click on the identify button to see which rectangle represents each monitor. So again if I click that you can see one is this monitor the way it's positioned here. If I click it again two is represented by our laptop. You may find that the physical arrangement of your monitors doesn't match where the computer thinks they are located. To change this, just click and drag the rectangles so they match the way your monitors are positioned and actually sit next to each other on your desk. You can even position them higher or lower than the other depending on how they sit next to each other. Once you have them positioned how you like them, click the apply button. So I'll click apply here and because my laptop sits lower than my desktop monitor, I want to have these set that way so that the, the second monitor, the laptop, sits down lower. By adjusting the vertical positioning, you will control where your mouse and other programs pass from one monitor to the next. So if I try to move the mouse here, if I cannot move my mouse beyond the border of the monitor. I have to come down here somewhere close to the other monitor and you can see the, the mouse passes over to the left onto the laptop monitor. Again, that mimics the way I have arranged these here. Once you have the monitors arranged the way you want them, you can close the display settings window. You can use your keyboard and mouse from either computer if you adjust a setting to allow this. From the main computer, press the window key plus P to bring up the projection settings again. Click on connect to a wireless display to show details about the connection you already have running. Check the box where it says allow mouse, keyboard, touch, and pin input from this device. Once you check that, you can control the computer with the mouse from your main computer and your laptop. So I can move, I'm moving the, lap, the mouse from my laptop now, and now I'm moving the mouse with my desktop computer. I can also type on either keyboard, and I can even hear audio if I play audio from my desktop computer, I can hear it on my laptop. If you uncheck this box, which is the default setting when you first connect a wireless display, you will not be able to type from your laptop. You will be able to move your laptop's mouse pointer around, but it won't be able to control your main computer. This can give you some fun, interesting, and confusing results since you will have two mouse pointers on the laptop screen at the same time. Your laptop's mouse is essentially powerless in this mode since it can't click anything. Once you allow the mouse and keyboard to work from your laptop, you will only see a single mouse pointer, no matter which mouse you use. The setting you choose is saved from one session to the next, so you don't have to specify this each time you connect the wireless display. In my testing, the speed of the second monitor was a bit slower than what you would get from a monitor connected with a cable, and the display would occasionally glitch. Also, I found that if I didn't accept the wireless connection on the laptop, once the connection timed out, I was not always able to reconnect the wireless display without rebooting one or the other of the computers. You can choose three different modes for the wireless display. If you do that up here on the main computer where the little bar is here and if you click on the gears you'll see gaming, working, or watching videos. I was not able to detect any difference between these three modes in my testing but both computers I was testing were fairly high-end PC, so these settings may be more helpful on computers with less horsepower. When you're ready to disconnect your wireless display from the main computer, just click the disconnect button up here on this toolbar or press the window key plus P and finally click disconnect. 
In my case, I was able to use either my desktop computer or my laptop computer as the wireless display. In other words, the connection worked both ways, although using a laptop as a wireless display was the goal of this video. Using a desktop computer probably doesn't make much sense if you have a separate monitor like this one, since you could just plug that into the laptop directly. If you have an all-in-one computer that has the computer and monitor built into a single unit, the technique discussed here would make more sense. You may find some hardware has more trouble than others connecting. An older laptop I have was simply not compatible to work as a wireless display. You may see a message like this on your computer when you are trying to configure it to be a wireless display. Hey, be sure to like this video if it helped you. That helps other people find it so they too can use their laptop as a second monitor. And subscribe and click the bell to get notified when I release future videos. I'd love to hear how this works for you in the comments below. I'm Fred Kelly, your nerd sidekick. Thanks for watching.